I'm gonna expose you right here and right now. You have been sabotaging me. You've been sabotaging me every single day since I first acquired your furry ass from the pet store. And guess what? I've had enough. You woke me up at 6 a.m. this morning. You took away my sleep, and then you ran around like a crazy person. Yeah, you know what? Just, just go. Rolling into Monday like... Hi, Ellie! Whoa! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It is your boy, SB, aka Scooter Brad, back with another brand new episode of Scoot Review. The one and only Scooter and News resource on the YouTube network. Now that we've got the original backdrop back, I just really want to go back to the original Scoot Review, man. Like, I'm going back to that exact same mood. I'm done with all the weird PewDiePie jokes. There might be a few here and there, but like, honestly, I just want to do this show as seriously as I possibly can, like I used to do it. So if you if you back that, then stick around and let's have a Bloody good damn mutt, right? Previous clip of the day winner was Jonathan Peroni with this insane rail combo. Tink, 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 double with fakey, busting out, bada bing, bada boom, very cool. Moving on. First clip of the day today comes from Tom Lee's with this uh, flare downside quad heel whip. One, two, three, four. It, it was resi, okay? We, we get it, but do it. And then talk, okay? You wanna talk smack about the resi? Okay? You better go do that on concrete, and then you can post your opinion. But until then, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care, I just, I don't care. The second clip of the day today comes from Jack Churchward. Roll it, mate. Flare, bar spin, tail whip, bar spin. And the height on that was quite substantial. It was very nice. Yeah. Sammy Peach. Bro, I don't even know what the fuck this shit is. Okay, I don't... <sighs> how, am I how am I meant to commentate this? Something, peach, plant, spin, case, knows me, fakey something, cross, X up, uh, switch, uh, manual, one foot land. I, I don't know, Mara. I just, you know what? Let's just... Carry on. Sebastian did a bra flip, but this this is not what you are expecting, all right? Roll roll the clip. Oh my god. I don't care what you have to say. This clip wins. He doesn't even scooter. It I uh, don't care. This is the winning clip, okay? Well, there's no vote today. This is a scooter trick, so I'm going to have to award this man with the Scoot Review Clip of the Day Exception Award for Best BMX Adaptation of Scooter Trick Award LLC 2019 All Rights Reserved. Uh here you go, mate. Fucking take it. Simply Amazing! For those of you who do want to vote because you don't want a BMX rider to win the thing on the scooter show, okay, you can vote up in the cards and the next winner will be announced in the next episode of Scoot Review. Moving on! Today's headline, the Phoenix Pro Scooters team have, have quit. quit. All of them, every single one of them, are now, are gone. now gone. Will Judy, Casu Palin, Danny Schmidt, Tyler Bradley, Cooper Clark, Carson Miller, Jason Cheedy, Tommy Christiana, Rumit Selleck, and even Dan Barrett have all parted ways with Phoenix Pro Scooters. But why? Guys, do you know what this means? Oh my god. This means that there's like 10 open spots on the team. Better fill out an application. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. First name, Bootering. Spradley Scooter Brad at gmail dot oh, dot com password Jack is the goat confirm password I really don't want to type that ever again honestly age uh, I'm 47 submit application sorry elite i'm just gonna ride for phoenix now okay although the phoenix team was a pretty tight unit the riders still do have to consider what's best for them in the long run and due to the fact that phoenix is changing in operation simply didn't line up with what the riders needed to continue their relationship they all decided to quit after speaking with a number of phoenix riders we have determined that some of the following topics are the main reasons why all of these guys decided to leave the team as a unit in the first place number one they were promised a wider deck, but they never 
ever got it. Not just because they wanted it, but because that's where the industry is at right now. And you could easily say that the majority of riders are riding at least five or five and up at this point. If Phoenix can't keep up with the riders in this sense, then of course they're gonna jump ship to other companies that will be producing wider than five decks. Perhaps they could have made these decks wider if they had the money to do it. But with the apparently declining sales within the company, this wasn't really an option. There was too much money going out and not enough money coming in. Number two, the team manager. After Jake Hershey resigned as the team manager, Phoenix began to pay very little attention to the team and their requests, i.e., you know, receiving parts, going on trips, and other such things that the TMs are required to do when it comes to organizing the team and their wishes, what they need, what they need to do and stuff. Thirdly and finally, the paychecks of those pro riders at the top of the food chain on the Phoenix team, their paychecks were getting cut down, minimalized, and ultimately sacrificed to stay alive, maybe? The pro riders on payroll received less and less attention as a result of Jake resigning as team manager. It seems like everything started going really downhill at that point very quickly. It was kind of a snowball effect. The riders stopped getting attention paid to them. The paid riders stopped getting paid. I for one hope that Cooper, Met, Tyler, Nick, and Tommy are all still getting paid for their SIG model decks. To any pro riders out there watching this, you guys need to make sure that your contract for any signature part includes a statement where you are to be paid your royalty once the production of the product is completed. Meaning that you are paid when the deck or whatever else it is actually exists. You should never have to chase a company for any royalty money whatsoever. The cost of your royalty is so minuscule in comparison of what they're actually spending to produce the entire product. So make sure you get paid up front and make sure it's on paper because if it's not, Mate, you might not get paid at all. Ultimately, if Phoenix couldn't pay their riders, well then you know what that means. There's no money. And when there's no money left, well you know where this is going. It's, it's a, a going, going out, out of business, business sale. sale. Oh, oh, get, get your decks, decks, get your get wheels, wheels 99, 99 bucks, bucks, 20 bucks, bucks a wheel, wheel take, take it. it. It's, it's all, all gotta, gotta go. go. We're going go out of business. business. All jokes aside, a source close to Turnstile's owner, Frank McDonald, has revealed that Phoenix could potentially be going out of business. This would line up with the fact that their entire Phoenix team has now scattered. But what went wrong? Before Jake became the TM, apparently the one prior was very slow and not a lot was done in his time frame of being the team manager. Only two signature decks were made since the Reventons went out of fashion around the same time the ownership passed from the original owner Tom Floyd over to Frank at Turnstile. And like the fact that Phoenix never made Kai Saunders a SIG deck, they're still paying for it. Tyler Bradley prior to his deck release posted 11 times throughout 2017 and since then has posted twice two times. It's impossible to know if it would have made a difference or not had Kai got a SIG deck over Tyler Bradley's or even alongside Tyler Bradley's, but let's break it down. Now, Jake claims that the Tyler deck was agreed upon somewhere around late 2016, where Kai was already a well-established Phoenix rider at the time, with more video part views than the entire Phoenix team in 2015. But that's not all. He also had the highest viewed video part in 2016 as well. In 2017, he was only just beaten out by Nick Tedrick, but came in close second with his volume one video. And then 2018 was another year at the top and absolutely dominated the entire Phoenix team Still no SIG deck. By the time Kai up and left Phoenix, there was a plan in place to actually produce him a signature part and put him on the pro team. But I think we can all clearly see that it was too little, too late. I think Kai made the right choice leaving Phoenix for native. Supporting a rider own brand is much more important than keeping these corporate businesses afloat. Let me put these brands into a little family tree for you, okay? So here you've got Phoenix. Above that, it is owned by Turnstile. Above that, it is owned by Greenover, or at least partly owned by Greenover. Greenover also owns District. It's all very corporate and confusing. Just the point is, okay, support Rider Owned, for goodness sake, all right? Just make life easier, okay? Support Rider Owned. You got Elite, Supremacy, you got Native, you got Aztec, you got Rogue. There's, there's a couple of them. Just support right our own, dude, because they will be the ones that stick around at the end when everything turns to shit. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's the stack of the day, day, day. Sam's Wiener won the last episode of Stack of the Day. He's riding with our Willy, he's at Caloundra, and then... Oh. Mm. oh, his poor scrotum. The first stack of the day comes from Edgecombe Titus. And this man cannot backy very well at all. Nope. Yeet! Oof! Goddamn, this man 
Uh, oh, oh, wow. Archie Cole! Thank you, Lewis Smith, for sending me this. <laughs> Archie Cole did an oopsie. Next one comes from the latest proto part. It is Hercules with what I like to call the McRibber. He's got that bump to bar and just mm, lands mm, right on the bars, right in his ribs. That's why we're calling it the McRibber. Order now. Link in bio. Use code Buddha at the vault for 10% off. Next one comes from Cheesy Gary. And oh, mate, this is worse than BT's fault. 360 catches the leg. Bam! His knee is destroyed. He no longer has a kneecap. I think Brenton has one still, but oh, that man is, that one is surely done for. And finally, <laughs> Raspberry Kush Pop is definitely gonna have to pop some Kush after hitting this rail, all right? Watch this. Oh! <laughs> that was the gnarliest thing I have ever seen. In my life. I'm gonna have to take back that clip of the day of water and I'm gonna have to give it to this guy. Tom Vardell is his name, all right? And remember that. And props to you. I cannot believe he actually got up and did that again. <laughs> Let me watch that one more time. Oh. Release radar. In lighter news, the Proto SCS is now officially 10 years old. <laughs> it's older than most scooter kids that don't know what it is. <laughs> With this comes an exciting new version of the original standard compression system, including new 6mm bolt heads, thank goodness, spreader bolts, and the baby SCS now fits oversized bars. Yeet. We really have to give Andrew Broussard some props here, guys, okay? Hey, everybody, I'm Andrew Broussard. This guy has a patented compression system, and literally every single scooter company under the sun stole this. Tilt is dropping a collab wheel and headset with none other than Undialed TV. The collab might come as a surprise to some of you guys because it is being the first Tilt X anything other than street. The wheels are blue with a tinge of yellow around the outside, two little fishies are swimming around the outskirts, and the headset is the same thing. The A-Town M is kicking off on March 9th, and you can try your luck winning a whopping 1,000 street creds, not dollars. Sorry guys, apparently you have to pay to ride in this comp, but don't actually win anything back, which I find quite strange. Hey, if you're about it, roll through, get some street cred. Devon77, Devon, the one that posts the random things on his Instagram account. He'll be there. Syndicate, on the other hand, is handing out beer and money for experts at their Syndicate Circuit event. Intermediates and beginners will win parts. Uh, dope. And the comp is at Capalaba Plaza on Sunday, the 24th of February. So be a cool guy and support this rider own shindig. Sink a beer for me, boys. <coughs> A video part worth looking at this week is the Blunt Flow V3 video part. Featuring Ivan Jimenez, Matis Neyrod, Jani Vol... Oh my god, these names, mate. Yanni Varela and David Borkish... Oh my god. Dude, and David Borkacher. And I probably Borker butchered every single one of them fucking names. God damn it, Scooter Brad is Clotis. Here are some of my favorite clips from the video. That is pretty much it for the news today, guys. Do not forget to like and subscribe if you have not already. This has been your boy, Scooter Brad, with another installation of Scoot Review, the one and only scootering news resource on the entire YouTube network. And with that being said, uh, farewell. Have an amazing day. Peace.